who to re retaliate against when they found out what's going on. What he doesn't want to do, of course, is, is to um, start a global conflict because, of course, if the Americans strike back, we are then into the situation which has existed in the Middle East for the last 30 years. It's a tit-for-tat situation. The Palestinians hit the Israelis. The Israelis retaliate with helicopter gunship attacks. The Palestinians hit back against the Israelis. And so it goes on. And that's not a, uh, a, a escalating um, um, and terrible conflict which um, George W. Bush wants to start. But at the same time, there is absolutely no doubt the dust hasn't yet even settled over the bottom of Manhattan after the Twin Towers collapsed due to this horrendous terrorist attack. When the dust has settled, there will be calls for vengeance. United, the United States is the mightiest power that the world has ever seen, and they have to inflict their authority, they have to, I'm sorry, impose their authority in the, on the world, and the citizens of the United States of America will demand that those responsible for these attacks will be punished. That in itself is going to cause another counter-reaction from those who are going to be on the receiving end of America's retaliation. But it's almost impossible to deal with them because you say, well, we'll bring down the full force of the law. The guys who did it are all dead because they're quite happy to die. Yeah, but the people who sponsor them aren't, and there's many, many more who will line up to do it. These guys who did it, John, they believe that they have gone to paradise. What we're, what we're facing here is a situation where we believe the perpetrators of this act have gone to hell because of the horror of what they've done and the fact that they've murdered in our eyes thousands, probably thousands of American citizens, but the communities where they come from regard them as heroes because they say they have gone through the gates of paradise for doing what they've done. They have struck at the, what is known as the Great Satan in the Middle East, the United States of America, because of its support for um, uh, Israel in the Middle East, and their families will be terribly proud of them for having led these attacks and sacrificed their own lives in, in, in the process. Their families receive cards from relatives and neighbours, not of condolence, well, congratulations, because your sons have become martyrs and gone to paradise. It's an extraordinary situation, and how you face up to a community where they are so willing to give their own lives, not just willing, anxious. Some of them are anxious to give their own lives in a fight against what they see as the great Satan, the Western world, um, capitalism, um, all sorts of other ideologies about the West which they despise and hate. It, it really is a conflict which, which, which has no end. Well, this is talk sport. There are no estimates as yet as the, the terrible death toll of today's four terrorist atrocities in the United States of America. The, the horror of that really turns the stomach. Let's hear now from the Prime Minister, Tony Blair, spoke earlier to the nation uh, about today's atrocious events. The full horror of what has happened in the United States earlier today is now becoming clearer. It is hard even to contemplate the utter carnage and terror which has engulfed so many innocent people. We've offered President Bush and the American people our solidarity, our profound sympathy, and our prayers. But it is plain that citizens of many countries around the world, including Britain, will have been caught up in this terror. I have just chaired an emergency meeting of the British government's Civil Contingencies Committee and I would like to explain some of the measures that we have agreed to take here. There are a range of precautionary measures. We have stepped up security at airports to the highest levels. No flights will take off from the United Kingdom, for which we cannot apply the highest standards of security for air crew and passengers. Private flights have been stopped except where specifically authorised. Flight paths into London have been changed, so there will be no civil overflights of central London. Security has been increased across the full range of government buildings and military premises. The police across the whole of the UK are on full alert. All our defence facilities around the world have been moved to high alert to ensure the protection of British service personnel. Advice has been given to major financial and business institutions about appropriate security measures. A number of other security measures have been taken and of course we are in close touch with US, European and other allies and are cooperating with them on issues of security. All relevant ministers remain in communication and the committee, the Civil Contingencies Committee, will meet again tomorrow at 8am. 
Obviously, some of these measures, not least the effect upon airports, will lead to some disruption. And I hope people understand that. But other than the specific measures we have taken, or that we have advised others to take, business and everyday life can continue as normal. As for those that carried out these attacks, there are no adequate words of condemnation. Their barbarism will stand as their shame for all eternity. As I said earlier, this mass terrorism is the new evil in our world. The people who perpetrate it have no regard whatever for the sanctity or value of human life. And we, the democracies of the world, must come together to defeat it and eradicate it. This is not a battle between the United States of America and terrorism, but between the free and democratic world and terrorism. We therefore here in Britain stand shoulder to shoulder with our American friends in this hour of tragedy. And we, like them, will not rest until this evil is driven from our world. It's the Prime Minister Tony Blair speaking on TalkSport. We've seen the first estimate of the death toll for today's atrocities. It's from Fox, and uh, it's, it's a horrific figure, 10,000 people. The estimated death toll from today's four terrorist attacks on the United States of America. At times like these, Mike, that uh, politicians are really defined by their actions uh, and, and what they do. I can't believe that figure you've just read out, John. 10,000 people in one terrorist, or well, in a series of terrorist attacks within a few minutes of each other. That is barely credible in this day and age. As for the um, speech that we've just heard from the Prime Minister, I have to say, I thought it was a magnificent speech. Um, I'm not a great fan of politicians, as you may or may not know. I think they often mouth platitudes, and I think that the disgraceful thing sometimes about politicians is that they try to make political capital out of tragedy and out of uh, terrible situations. But I thought Mr Blair's speech tonight uh, was statesmanlike, uh, extremely reassuring to the people of this country, all the relevant measures have been taken, warning businesses to be on their guard, uh, grounding um, uh, airline flights, putting the military on high alert around the world, not just in this country. And generally speaking, I thought he came out of that with a real sense of leadership and reassurance to people, which is exactly what this country needs at the moment, because you can say what you like when everybody has seen the images that we've been watching all day of the ter terrible events in the United States this afternoon, it will send a shiver down everybody's spine and everybody in their beds tonight will feel worried that the world is out of control. Well, it's been a gruesome day, one of the worst ever in the whole history of the world, the estimated death toll, and it is a very early estimate, 10,000 people have died in four terrorist attacks on the United States of America. Uh, if you haven't heard all the details, let's uh, cross now and get the very latest from the Sky News Centre and Martin Spedley. Thanks, John. There's been an incredible and devastating wave of terrorist attacks across the northeast of the United States. Two hijacked planes crashed into and destroyed the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York. There could have been around 20,000 people inside the buildings at the time. A third hit the Pentagon in Washington. The commercial plane's gone down near Pittsburgh. Now, early indications are reporting that the death toll is estimated at around 10,000 people. American fighter aircraft are patrolling the skies and all commercial aircraft in the US have been grounded for the first time ever. The loss of life has been described as tremendous. Here the Queen has expressed her growing disbelief and shock. In a message to President Bush she expressed heartfelt sympathy and said her thoughts and prayers were with the Americans. Tony Blair's describing the outrage as the most terrible, shocking event. In New York, the Mayor Rudolph Giuliani has advised people to leave the lower part of the city. My of the subway system has been shut down and traffic's being allowed to leave Manhattan but not to come in. Sky's Matthew Farrell now has a look at the timetable of terror that struck the United States today. Just before two o'clock our time, the first jet airliner crashes into the World Trade Center in New York. TV networks start flashing the dramatic pictures almost immediately. Just minutes later, a second plane crashes into the second tower, causing a devastating explosion seen on screens around the world. It quickly emerges 
that the FBI is investigating reports of a plane being hijacked before the World Trade Center crashes. At 2.30 UK time, US President George Bush declares he has a national tragedy. Then at almost 2.45, a plane crashes near the Pentagon in Washington, the heart of the American military machine. Part of the White House is evacuated amid further terrorist fears. Just after three shocking pictures show the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsing followed by the North Tower. And at 3.30, a plane crashes outside Somerset County Airport near Pittsburgh. Matthew Farrell, Sky News. Now, there's to be a minute's silence before tonight's Champions League fixtures as a mark of respect for those who died in the United States today. Liverpool are playing Boa Vista at Anfield, while Arsenal are in Spain to play Real Mallorca. And there's an emergency number for anyone worried about relatives in America. The Foreign Office number is 0207 008 0000. That's 0207. 7008 That's the latest for now from the Sky News Centre. We'll have another update at 8 o'clock and bring you more as we get it. Thanks very much, Martin. More from the Sky News Centre throughout the course of the evening. This is Talk Sports. I can tell you that we're going to stay with the, the atrocities, the four terrorist attacks that uh, have brought an estimated early death toll of 10,000 people. And uh, just stay with these events, the, the enormity of which really can't be uh, overstated. The fires have finally gone out from the Pentagon. The death toll there, still impossible to estimate. Let's go again and join Fox TV for the very latest now, from the United States. It uh, came around 10 o'clock this morning Eastern Time when uh, the Twin Towers, the World Trade Center, the symbol of American capitalism to many, came tumbling down one after the other. This after they were struck by two hijacked planes. Our Julia Raleigh, a Fox News producer, is on the phone with us now from Lower Manhattan. Julia, do they have a handle on the situation there yet? There's a lot of people who are standing around, John, who are kind of watching what's going on. There are people trying to fight the fires, but we're standing here just looking at flames and smoke billowing everywhere. The wind will start to blow, and the dust is about six inches thick where we're standing. will just start to swirl up in these dust devil-type storms and blow everything everywhere and around. I, from right where I'm standing, it doesn't look like it. The buildings uh, that you're talking about are not just the remnants of the Trade Center itself. You're talking about other buildings nearby. So the other towers of the World Trade Center. So Tower 1 and 2 are gone. And it appears for the moment, so is our connection with Julia Raleigh, our field producer, uh, reporting live from Lower Manhattan. Yes, the World Trade Center, once the world's tallest building, certainly the tallest in Manhattan, uh, crumbled today. There is very little of it left except a pile of rubble. And as you can imagine, all right, we have, uh, we have now a link with uh, Mayor Giuliani, the mayor of New York City. Uh, let's listen in. That, uh, we're all undergoing right now is something that we've had nightmares about, probably thought wouldn't happen. My heart goes out to all of the innocent victims of this horrible and vicious act of terrorism, acts of terrorism. And our focus now has to be on saving as many lives as possible. We have hundreds of police officers and firefighters who are engaging in rescue efforts in lower Manhattan. I want to thank Governor Pataghi for the incredible cooperation and coordination and including uh, deploying the National Guard that will be available to relieve our police officers and firefighters and emergency workers in the next couple of hours. Uh, the governor and I just spoke to the President of the United States. The coordination with the federal government from the time of the first attack has been excellent, including closing off the airspace around Manhattan and doing everything that can possibly be done in the face of this barbaric act to make the city secure. And we will uh, strive now very hard to save as many people as possible and to send a message that the city of New York and the United States of America is much stronger than any group of barbaric terrorists, that our democracy, that our rule of law, that our strength and our willingness to defend ourselves will ultimately prevail. And I'd ask the 